in three, two, one. Happy New Year, everybody. As we can see, it is another year in the books for the NFL. As we head into this weekend, we head into the wild card weekend, which is 12 coveted spots to be in the playoffs. Arguably, we could say some of the best teams are in the playoffs. I think so, especially on the NFC side, as well as the AFC side. We're going to see the Patriots in this weekend's game. We haven't seen that since 2009. A coach in carousel, Black Mondays, of course. You have the Cleveland Browns let go of a coach. You have the New York Giants let go of a coach. And obviously, earlier in the year, you had the Washington Redskins and the Carolina Panthers both also terminating their coaches. But for many of you, a lot of you always ask me about the player's point of view and what, you know, what happens. This is what happens when the season is over for most of the teams, right? This black bag that I'm holding, you've seen it probably on Hard Knocks, and if not, this is your luggage on the last day of work. You train really hard for each and every season to come up, and for most of us, and for a lot of guys that you root on and you cheer for, they're gone before you know it. It's harsh, man. I'll tell you this. It's a season that you work really hard for, you prepare yourself, mind, body, and soul to go in, and you want to live out a dream. For a lot of guys, knowing that the hourglass is very short for them, a lot of them are trying to make an impact in a hurry, cast that check, and hopefully, when it's all said and done, you remember their names. But if not, and for the many, this is this is your this is your travel. So you see several guys in the locker room with this black bag, and you throwing your work stuff in the bag. That's the reality of the National Football League. As we look forward to the playoffs, a lot of men around the country have departed their respective cities that they play for and headed home. Many are licking their wounds, getting ready for the upcoming season in 2020, while some of the others, they're trying to figure out if they want to continue to play this game or not. Cleveland Browns, preseason favor for a lot of people on the outside looking in. It just may not only look for a coach, but they got a lot of reshuffling to do, but they did a couple things right two years ago, and that's one, drafting Nick Chubb in the second round in the 35th pick. Nick Chubb was only four yards short his rookie campaign of 1,000 yards. But this year, wow, the kid was unreal. And for a short time in, in history, I guess, you could say he was the leading rusher in the 2019 season until somebody in the Nashville area decided to have a monster of the day. Alabama, Heisman Trophy, but the man is a freak of nature. There's not a lot of running backs that play the game that's one bigger than me, but two, just make me take a step back. And that guy was Derrick Henry. Derrick Henry had an unbelievable year this year. He set out uh, week 16, but came back week 17 with a vengeance. 211 yards on the ground, giving him 1540 on the year, knighting him the Russian title champ of the 2019 season. A lot of people don't realize the hard work that goes into that. One, you need a great offensive line, you need a heck of a year of training, you need luck on your side for his health, and lastly, you need a coaching staff and offensive coordinator is gonna feed you the ball and let you do what it do. Obviously, Chubb's a little younger than Henry, but both backs are something that we need to watch for some time to come. And for you fancy football, if you didn't draft those two, shame on you, but maybe next year. Lastly, before we move on, we got to talk about the running back spot. You got to talk about the guy that did it right. The person that did it right, he's joining the company of two other Hall of Famers, one being Roger Craig in 1985. He was the first running back to do it. He went for 1,000 yards, twice, rushing and receiving. Then you had the 99 campaign that was done by the all great 2 8, Marshall Falk. Greatest show on turf, Marshall Falk continued to do so, and he did it almost a year prior as well. The thing about 2 8, man, is unreal that. His uncannable ability to be a smaller back, to be so durable, so multi-talented, and just get the job done and revolutionize the position. One of the reasons why I know the sport so well, because he was just a mad scientist when it came to knowing the offensive scheme and how to get the ball and what to do with it in the open field. Seeing that those guys had unbelievable years and you got you got a guy like Christian McCaffrey. What Christian has done that has impressed me so much in his career so far is he's already taken upon himself to figure out what he needs to do with his diet, how he needs to rest, and yeah, how he needs to attack the game week in and week out to be able to be this durable. The thing about it that really irks me about running backs to have these unbelievable years like this is now, once they prove themselves, now you naysayers are looking about, did you overuse them? If his time's up, what's gonna happen? Let's just pause for a minute. Let's just round of applause for a guy that's done something that only two other men have done in the history of the sport, and he did so in a fashion that has Backward quarterback, a firehead coach, and a team not so good. 
He may not win the MVP because of Lamar Jackson, but golly, the man is bad. Lastly, I want to bring it home, talk about the playoff picture this weekend. You have the Seattle Seahawks on the road going to Philly. I think that's the dub for the Seattle Seahawks in the new looking but old rendition of what we come to get used to in, in Seattle. Yeah, that's the beast mode Seattle Seahawks. And there's one yard, they keep flirting with it, right? A couple years ago in the Super Bowl, last weekend again, they got a penalty. For some reason, beast mode, Pete Carroll and this one yard keep coming up, and I'm just gonna keep watching, because I think I think something's gonna mix with it. Minnesota Vikings on the road in New Orleans. I think it's gonna be a good game, maybe not as good as two years ago, but this time I actually think the Saints get the win, and they continue to steamroll, and probably mean the NFC Championship. We gotta continue to watch that as well. AFC side, you have Tennessee Titans going to New England with Coach Vrabel, where Coach is going back to a homecoming. He played for Coach Belichick for a long time in his career, and what more? I mean, I'm sure he's not even sleeping this week. What more can you want to get a playoff win against your coach, the GOAT himself, Coach Belichick? But I don't think the Tennessee Titans are going to do so. I think the Tennessee Titans are really run heavy, and their quarterback play is just not good enough to get them out of a situation, especially going to New England, where those guys just know how to play football in the postseason. Lastly, the Bills. The Bills are going on the road to Houston Texans. Coach O'Brien has done a really good job down there in Houston. He's been down there for a while. He can't quite seem to get out of the wild card of the divisional round, and I think that's the same this year. It's gonna be interesting to see how the fans in Houston, if, they, if he comes up short this weekend against the Buffalo Bills, how that fan base reacts to him constantly getting into the playoff, but not enough or deep into the playoffs to give a real run at the Super Bowl. What a year, unreal. Don't ever forget, as fans, sometimes we kind of take it for granted that these guys year after year continue to perform at a high level, but we don't think about what it takes to be able to do that year in and year out, week in and week out. We applaud these men. For the ones that are not in the playoffs, yo, hopefully you get there next year. The guys that are deciding to retire, blessings to you. Good luck to you in your future endeavors. And for those that are gonna be ready to entertain us, let's do this.